Hello there, it's Simone. I'm here to review all... How many pens did I have inked in April? Nine pens that I had inked in April of 2024. Because I am not moving any of those forward into the month of May, I am going to do 31 inks, 31 days. Yeah, I was inspired by all the people who did 30 inks, 30 days in April. And so I decided, nah, I'm not going to wait for another 30 day month to come around. I actually also don't have time for that. During that month, I'm just going to do this whenever I want to do. And that is in May. So when you're watching this, I should be already have pulled my first ink and inked my first pen. Uh, and then I will update you all on a weekly basis how things are going. And I'm seeing something right here and I don't know what this is. Can you see this? I need to look at this closer. But we are going through in color order as I swatched or shared them when I shared my currently inked video which is right here. I do not have writing samples or a an evaluation for the uh, Pilot 2.4 millimeter because I only use this for um, titles and such or yeah. And I will just briefly be talking about this when it is its turn. Um, I had inked this Lamy 2000 with Kobe ink lamp work maroon. This is um, a fine 14k gold nib. I This was a carryover from March. I inked this sometime in the middle of March. Then I had my Benu Euphoria in the Earl Grey uh, colorway. I put a medium nib on this and I had it inked with Pelican Brilliant Brown. Then the Nagasawa Kobe. I don't know if they say Kobe. Is it Kobe inks and this is just the Nagasawa Gyurske? Um, I remember in my unboxing of this pen I said I don't really understand the den here I believe that this is the whole name of this um, their pen line is Nagasawa pen style den this might be a Japanese word that I don't know of I tried to put it in Google Translate it didn't come didn't show me anything but when I See, look at their Instagram. That's their Instagram name, Nagasawa Pen Style Den. So I feel really weird for saying this. I still don't like the um, the font. That is still the same, but that's just how it seems. Uh, this is currently probably my favorite pen because of the finial. This is the Gyuske model in with gold hardware, and it has a broad nib. It was inked with... Uh, dominant Industry Earl Grey T, two Earl Greys next to each other. Then these these two pens are fairly new to my lineup or my whole collection. This is the um, Sailor Pro Gear Imperial Black with a medium nib. Um, it has black hardware, and I just find this pen to be so stunning. It was inked with with um, Rohre and Klingner Altgold Grün. Um, what was I going to say about these two pens? Yes, these two have 21 karat gold nibs. This one is a steel nib. And then we have my Platinum Century 3776 Shape of Heart in the Rose Gold and black edition with a medium 14 karat gold nib. It was inked with Birmingham Penco Cerulean. Then I used my Pilot Vanishing Point in deep yellow. Um, it originally came with a steel nib and I swapped it out 
to be, be a an 18 karat medium nib inked with Pilot Iroshizuku Kompeki. This pen is the Lamy Safari Limited Edition 2024 Violet Blackberry. I love the contrast or differently colored. It's not a contrast, but it just works really well. This color scheme. I'm very infatuated with this color at the moment. I had a broad nib on here and it was inked with diamond um, rainbows end. This was from the ink vent 2023. Then the Benu Euphoria in jazz. I had just simply unscrewed the whole um, section of the Pilot Parallel and screwed it into the barrel of the pen and it fits um, really nicely. I do believe it also fits with the Benu Talisman and this is a really nice way to not have to use the really long very awkward um, pen body of the Pilot Parallel. This was a 2.4 millimeter um, parallel nib and it is inked with Diamine Lavender Frost, another Ink Vent 2023 ink. And then this is a carryover from March. It is the Scribo Feel in Mosto with a an 18 karat medium nib. It was inked with Sailor Manio Akebi. And those are all the nine pens that I had inked. Let's look at the ratings. I think I'm going to put these pens over on this side today. So the first one that I want to talk about is the Lamy 2000 in fine with Nagasawa Kobe Lampwork Museum Maroon. I think there is a link should be in there also. Um, and I also put a comparison to Diamine Writer's Blood. It reminded me a lot of it, but I think Writer's Blood is just a tiny bit more red. And I really loved the Lampwork Mar Museum Link Maroon. Lampwork Museum Maroon Link? I don't know. Um, I'm actually considering buying, purchasing a bottle of this ink because I just enjoyed it so much. So I gave, uh, I, I'm not sure that I will, after this month, will continue rating my pens in this way because I, either I like something or I don't. And especially with my inks, I'm really rigorous about, do I keep this? Do I pass it along? And if I didn't like it, it's a zero. So maybe I do a one, two, three, or zero minus five plus five. I don't know. Yes, no, maybe. But the ink is a 10. I, I love the color of the ink. I love the flow of it in this pen. I have heard that some Kobe inks seem to be dry. It doesn't feel like it in the Lamy 2000. However, I need to add that the Lamy 2000 in general is a fairly wet writing pen. So this might be skewed, but in this pen it worked great. I would love to experience this ink in a different uh, pen, but I only have like 1.5, not even milliliter left. And because I'm considering purchasing a bottle of this, I'm, I'm probably just passing it on. Um, I'm focusing on my samples that I haven't used this year. So if in 2025, you know, maybe all of these things change, but currently my plans are in 2025, I'm using bottles. Um, if this is still an interesting ink for me, I might just get it so I can experience it in different nibs. Um, the difference in you might warrant a bottle. The nib is a 10. I love the flow and writing experience with this pen. Um, I actually like it so much that I'm considering 
getting a medium nib in this just to see how how it feels and the pen I gave it a 9.5 instead of a 10 yes uh, I also can actually award different numbers because this doesn't have a really pronounced grip section I tend to choke up on this sometimes and grip it really tightly and then it becomes uncomfortable but I have gotten much better and so this isn't as much of an issue. I usually post this pen and then it feels very, very um, balanced, well balanced in my hand. The next pen that I had inked was, I'm just going to cover this up so we're not getting distracted, was the Bennu Euphoria with a medium nib, Earl Grey. Um, maybe I just had a really good run with all of those inks and pens because you can see I give this straight up tense all the way through. I love the color of this, this brown. You can see here that it has some reddish or orangey undertones in the writing here and yeah I just really like this brilliant brown as a medium brown ink. Um, the nib I would actually say that I like the Schmidt nibs the steel Schmidt nibs a tad bit more than the Yovo um, steel nibs. I love that they're smooth I love how wet they are. And so I, I would actually say this is my standard nib of choice. If I had a say, then I would actually ask um, that all of the pen makers used these Schmidt nibs instead of Yovo nibs. Now I really would love to, um, to, to try a Bach steel nib just to see how that feels. Um, the pen... The Euphoria model is super comfy for me and my writing. And I just really like this, um, this colorway. I love the, the dark flecks of the tea that is in here. I like the gold color distribution. I like the flu blue that is buried down here. It, it, it really has some depth. Um, that I just enjoy and to me I know that many people have a problem with gold shimmer and silver hardware I actually just don't really care about this so a 10 10 10 for for this pen I would actually if I had a bottle of this then I would totally marry this pen and ink the next one that I had inked, I said it earlier, is the Naga Savagirske in broad. Um, I had it inked with Dominant Industry All Grey Tea. You can clearly see that I haven't written with my pens much. Oh well, ah, looks quite less when I hold it this way than when I hold it that way. Um, I used these pens for letter writing um, and that's about it this month sometimes in my journals in my uh, creative journal um, that's also part of the reason why I am switching over to uh, 31 inks 31 days I I have a little bit of time in the morning to fill a pen I have a little bit of time in the evening to write with it and to experience it and if I just write this much and you know give a tiny synopsis of something that happened or how I like this pen and ink combination. Then I get to experience this pen and then I can just unink it and do repeat the same thing over and over again. And when I set myself up like this, I don't feel bad if I don't use a pen repeatedly throughout the month like I did in April and March and February since I got my puppy. I did not feel bad, but I just didn't use them extremely extensively. And so this whole system of having pens inked for a month 
and then doing this grand report about them. I still want to do reports. I think I will check in weekly of how is how it's going, what I'm which pens I'm inking. Um but yeah, I am going to break out of the currently inked box and just try something else. So I said it earlier, I think this is my favorite pen at the moment. The ink I gave a 10. I have used this ink prior and I actually did a, I think it's this one, did a ink exploration when I was taking time to do those. Now that I'm flipping through them, maybe that's something that I could pick up after uh, summer is over because I really like how this looks and the things that I learn when I do these pages. It feels this looked like it had some more darker undertones here. This looks just orange. I don't know if it's the paper. I used it on other papers as well, but I didn't experience this um, dark dark stuff here that I see here as, as well. Um, this ink is amazing. After using this, I purchased a bottle of it and I this is my perfect orange. I love it. The nib, it's a broad nib, is just so good. Um, I love the flow of the ink in this pen. I have heard this is supposed to be a drier ink. Not in, not in this pen at all. It felt really great when I wrote with it. I did never feel like this was dry. Um, I love the flow and I cannot wait to use another ink in this pen and just see how my experiences change and how my feelings towards this pen change. Um, yeah, for the pen I said, I have found my favorite pen. If I were to rank my pens right now, this would be by my top one. Um, then the next pen that I had inked is Sailor, the Sailor Pro Gear with a medium nib in Imperial Black. Um, I had it inked with Rohre and Klingner Alt Gold Grün. And I don't know. So I gave the ink a five and I put it out because I will ship this off to the person who I'll pick after this currently inked. Um, because it's just, I don't know. I feel like these two, so I swatched them as well. The Troublemaker Hanging Rice and Robert Oster Tea Time just looked better on paper on the paper that I'm currently using than Altgoldgrün. Um, I wrote that I loved this ink previously, but I'm not sure I still do. It might be time to get rid of it. And what I, the specific thing that I noticed on here, it looks very yellow leaning and that's exactly what I like. Uh, it looks more like Robert Oster Tea Time, but when I use Altgoldgrün on Sansen, Tomorrow River paper, it looks more muddy. These pinkish undertones that I had never seen before start to surface. And I just don't enjoy that. And so because I'm mostly using Sansen, Tomorrow River paper right now, I think it's, it's time to move this bottle along. There is still maybe a third in the in the bottle, so whoever receives this will get quite a good, definitely one pen fill out of this. The nib I gave an eight, so I seem to have some nuances. Maybe those pens, the pens that I rated ten, and the inks are just that good. Um, this is a medium nib, and sometimes when I wrote with this, it felt like the times were misaligned. I have a really hard time seeing this with my loop. Maybe somebody else needs to teach me how to actually determine it. I thought it was easy, but um, I'm I'm not sure. And I don't want to use micro mesh on a pen this uh, expensive. And also that I like so much where I can't just easily replace the nib if something goes wrong. So 
Uh, maybe also this ink is too dry. I don't know. This is the second fill that I had in this pen. And so I just need more time with this pen with other inks to see if I want this to be looked at by a Nipmeister who can then determine what is wrong with it. But I really, when I didn't feel like it, it was misaligned, it felt great. So yeah, still need to analyze more and use more inks in this. The pen, man, I don't know what it is about this sailor. The matte finish just makes this feel so much more um, luxurious to me. And the black finish is great. So I I don't know. I Even though there are so many colorful sailors out there that I sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, I want this. Uh, the Aurora Borealis was one of those. They were just on sale at Endless Pens. And I, yeah, but... Then I looked at the two that I have and I'm I'm okay. I'm really good with these really laid back four sailor pens. I love them. I really do. So yeah, I gave it a 10 because this experience just surprised me. Then I used my Platinum 3776 with a medium nib. This is the Shape of Heart in, I don't know if this is piano black, but it's a super shiny black and rose gold finish. I talked about this in my currently inked video when I just had them inked. Um, I thought about selling this pen and I don't know what I was thinking. Let's talk about the ink first. Birmingham Pen Co. Cerulean. I gave this a 10. It's the perfect shade of teal for me, and or Cerulean, and it shades beautifully, even though it is wet. It's not a dry writing ink at all. Uh, the nib is an experience in itself. It's a really stiff gold nib, but it's still, it's so smooth when you have a wet uh, lubricated ink in here and so even though it's not as buttery smooth it's not maybe as temperamental as um, sailor pet nibs every time I picked it up and I wrote with it I'm like yes I like this I love this so I am not thinking about um, selling this pen anymore I'm actually it reaffirmed that I just need to spend enough time figuring out well that's cool dude um figuring out what lubricated inks would work in this pen well and maybe marrying this to some of my bottled inks so that i can have a great writing experience every time i ink this and the pen i gave a 10 as well because i love the shiny piano black and I'm not biased at all, but of all the Shape of Heart pens, I think this is the most beautiful one. I don't even know where the dude is uh, blowing stuff, so you just have to bear with me. My puppy is sleeping, and so I'd rather film with noise in the background than not film at all. Um, the Pilot Vanishing Point with a medium 18 karat gold nib in deep yellow was inked with Pilot Iroshizuku Konpeki. This was another pen that I originally thought I wanted to sell, possibly, and that's why I inked it up. <laughs> the ink I gave a 10. I love the bright blue of Compeki. And the a bonus point of this ink is that it's a Pilot Uroshizuku ink, which means it's quite wet and lubricated. So, yeah, I am happy when I look at things that are written with this ink. The nib, I gave a 10. Um, 
It's so smooth and soft. It's, it's bouncy. And I love the wet pen writes with a wet ink. I have come to find that I really enjoy when I don't have the same writing experience with every pen. So my goal is not to have all the same nibs, all the same feel, because that's what makes it fun for me. The different writing experiences with the different nibs. And this one is a really great writing experience. Um... I gave the pen in general a nine because of the clip. I I don't have really, really a problem with the clip per se, but I really have to pay attention so that my handwriting stays consistent. I seem to wobble around more and I just don't like that. Um, and so I need to pay attention that it is the same direction and everything is the same. But yeah, I, again, I'm not going to sell this pen. I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, if you might have noticed, I have been using the same writing on those titles-ish. Um, this upper one is greatly inspired by um, handwriting stylings. It's an Instagram account. And there's two people, Inks and Anchors is one and the other... I don't know her name. Well, Inks and Anchors is Candace. But they choose a font every month and try to um, master writing with that font. And so I just was sick of using the same old, same old. And so I tried to um, develop my own I don't think that I'm following all of the letters that they shared on the Instagram account, but I like how consistent this looks. Some of the letters are the Z here looks weird and wobbly, but it was just fun to challenge myself to do this. And it was just the, the right amount of writing to do without getting, you know, overwhelmed, sick of it or yeah, I liked doing this. And then this one was inspired by a YouTube video that my friend Shauna shared and I cannot think of it right now. I will link it in the description box below um, where someone shared how you can embellish your handwriting with super easy ways and you don't have to be a, an artist. Um, and this was one of them that she mentioned and I thought, well, yeah, heck yeah, I can do this. I didn't even watch the whole video. I took this away and decided, well, it's okay. Maybe I'll go back and look at the other uh, things that she uh, suggested. But for now, I'm, I'm glad that I took this away because it was really good to do. Last pen here, and then I have two more. This was the Lamy Safari with a broad nib in Violet Blackberry, and it was inked with Diamine Rainbow's End. Um, yeah, well, so this ink surprised me a lot. I think I do have some comparisons. Well, I'll not going to show those. <laughs> well, I will. I was going to go back to the sailor here. I wanted to show you that I did some ink explorations for them. What is this one? This one is Altgold Grün. And this is how it looked like on original Tomoe River paper. I don't see this here. So maybe my color has changed. No, well, actually, when I look at this, I see those pinky. And there's a lot of pink in the chromatography. So it's not surprising that it would come out, out on specific papers. And then this one is Tea Time. And it looks a tiny bit darker. And I actually did not like how it looked on Tomo, original Tomoe River paper. But I like it a lot on here. And then this one. What, what's this one? Oh, yeah. Also had Cerulean here. Um, there is some red sheen in really heavy applications. Um, I liked this a lot. I was just looking 
on uh, Birmingham Penco's website, this color is sold out. I don't know if they ever come back with older colors, um, but I would probably purchase one of those. This, now I wonder how it compares to Sukio, but I don't know if I have that in here or not. <laughs> Let's check if I have written this. I'm, I hope you're okay with me going on this tangent. Palette Iroshi Suki Zukiyo. Compeki. Nope. Maybe it's in this one. Tarubi. No, yeah. Right here. Oh yeah, totally different. There is a lot more green in this one, I believe. No, there is no green. That's weird. Maybe it didn't do the chromatography just... Well, let me do this. It seems like there is an in-between. This is not... Nope. Nope, nope. We'll see. I will definitely find inks that I can put in to my... Uh, platinum 3776 shape of heart so let's go back to this one i was going to show you the comparisons i had this ink inked in number 14 i had this ink in the esterbrook sd in sea glass with a journal or snip you can see from the writing here how it totally does not compare to how it looked in the broad nib. I really, so I did not enjoy this a lot in here. And, but I put all of the inks into my project ink down. And so I pulled it and then I put it in this uh, Lamy, Saf Lamy Safari. It's still not off. Um, with a broad nib. And here is my rating. The ink I gave a nine because it's a shimmer ink and they're always more, um, they need more attention. That's a good word for it. But this is pretty darn good for a shimmer ink. I love that the shimmer is pink and not silver or gold. That makes this definitely more special. And you can definitely see that there is shimmer. It's it's subtle, but it's there. And that's what I like about shimmer. I don't want, same with sheen, I don't want my ink, my writing to be completely dominated with the shimmer or the sheen. But this way, this, this is what I like. I gave the nib a 10 because this nib just writes so well and smooth and it has a really great flow the so the tines are not too tight it just perfect perfect steel nib writing experience and i wrote up here um that i cannot wait to try a gold nib on a lamy safari but then after i wrote this i wondered what is there to top because this is really great and I mean, if I can get it greater, nice, but this this was so good, it doesn't really need to be topped. Um, the pen I gave a 10 because I am currently just so infatuated with this color and the fact that these are, you know, different. It makes it so much, it's just up oh, ah! pink surprise or magenta surprise and I, I love this black violet blackberry I always want to say blackberry violet or black blueberry or something but no violet blackberry this is just so good um, I'm glad I put lavender frost into the 2.4 millimeter uh, pilot parallel because it's an ink color that is not for me. And I actually already passed on this bottle to a friend who wanted to compare it to Colorverse Iris Nebula. And so I just sent it on to her. Um, this fill 
is totally enough for my experience with this ink. Um, it I didn't have any problems with it at all. It flowed nicely out of this palette parallel. There's nothing to say about this. It's just that I don't enjoy the specific color of this ink. Um, maybe it's too muted for me. Um, it's It was okay in the 2.4 millimeter, but I'm beyond keeping something that I'm not thoroughly enjoying. And so I am going to keep this. Maybe I'll actually leave this inked um, and not clean this out right now because I don't plan to use parallel nibs during my 31, 30, 31 inks, 31 days, 31 pens, maybe even beyond, who knows. And then the last ink and pen was a carryover from March as well. I actually re-inked this pen in March because it was empty. I don't know if I just didn't get a full fill. And I want to show you here. I hope you can see this. There is ink on the brim right here. And you can actually also see the green sheen on the grip section. And that's something that I need to invest uh, investigate a little bit further because it's always there. I just cleaned it off yesterday. And so I came back and I don't really know why this is happening. I cannot see anything that is broken, but I also don't know how I would be able to take apart this um, um, nib and feed to see if maybe the housing is cracked or anything. Um, yeah, so this needs further investigation and... There's that. Let's talk about the ink. This was a bottle that I own. I gave it a 10. Yeah, heck, ye heck yes, this ink is so good. I love how dark this uh, ink is. The magenta of this ink is just so dark. And the sheen, unless it's... Um, after write, not writing with it for a while, so I need to talk about this as well. Uh, it's just a tiny bit of sheen in some instances. It's kind of like uh, shading almost, where it is she not covering the whole ink with or the whole writing with sheen, just spots, and it makes it so much more interesting. Um, I did notice for sure here, for instance, um, that the ink is darker when I'm not using it for a while. There is no inner cap here. And so I assume that uh, some of the ink just, or the water in the ink evaporates. And so this is why it's darker here and more sheeny. Um, I gave the nib an eight, not because I don't like it or because I, I'm, it, there's something wrong with it. I really like writing with this nib. It feels great. I haven't found the specialty of it yet. And um, especially considering the actual price of this pen, um, I want to I want this to be more. And I don't know if I can determine that yet. So I gave it an eight. I really want to use this pen more. So this is probably going to be used in my 31 inks, 31 days, and just see different inks in this pen. So, so again, I can form a better opinion of this nib. I wrote, I love this nib. I need to use it more to understand it better. And then the pen I gave a nine because of the ink leak. Um, and because it's a piston filling fountain pen, I actually could have given this also less because it's a piston filling pen, but this one I can take apart if I wanted to and rinse the barrel out. This one I cannot. And I really have to say that I'm not a piston filler gal. Um, it's always more work 
and I just don't enjoy cleaning them. This also doesn't have an ink window, so I never know how much ink is in here, which I don't actually know. Is there an ink window here? Oh yeah, there is. Huh, wow. This is how I look at my pens. And then, so that's why I gave it a nine because of the, the ink that collects around here all the time. And if I need to wipe it off every time I use it, that's just tedious and so it doesn't deserve a 10. But again, I need to use this more and see how it performs with other, other uh, inks. I do want to point out that, that I really enjoy the grip section. It's faceted and that I thought in the beginning that it would make me not enjoy this pen, but it actually makes me using and writing and holding this pen makes me like it more because I don't have to feel like this is slipping out of my grip. Um, and the facets aren't, I don't really notice them when I hold my pen. So I can, I just love that this supports me not feeling like it's slipping out of my grip. So yeah, that's all of the pens and inks I had going for the month of April. I have to say that I don't think I can get much better than this. So I really have been able by filling pens and inks and writing down my observations. I feel like I have, I now have a really good grasp of what pen I can use with what ink and what writing experience I would enjoy. So I'm, I'm really excited that I'm at this stage where I don't have that many super huge disappointments anymore. Yes, last month, for instance, with the, uh, I had a Astrobook SD with a Techo nib inked with an ink. That was a disappointment, but I didn't dwell on that. I just uninked the pen and inked this one instead. Um, I'm going to give it another try and see how it works. Maybe it's the nib that I don't enjoy. We will see. Um, yeah, so this is going to be my, as I said, my very last currently inked in this format for a while. I want to play with a daily ink and pen for a while. I definitely want to do it for May. Not sure if I'm, if I make it through the month of May and I still feel like I could go on, then I will go on through June until I need to prepare for my sister's visit. And then I also want to play with having three pens inked for a little bit, for a week. Um, and then once I've played with these setups for a while, um, maybe I will come back to monthly pens and inks. Maybe I won't, um, but I'm just ready to break out of that um, arbitrary rule system for a while. This does not mean that I'm giving up on Project Inkdown. I'm just going to pull samples from my sample box for a while. Um, I do also feel very drawn to determining which ink bottles that are currently in my collection really should stay and which shouldn't. Um, I think maybe if that is something that I still feel very drawn to at the end of the summer, maybe I'm going to do a 30 inks 30 days in September that uses bottled inks. Um, I do have more than 30 bottles of inks, which is, yeah, unbelievable um, to determine which ones should stay in my collection and which shouldn't. But this is it. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for your comments. 
I really appreciate everyone who is always watching my rambly long videos. You don't even know how much this means to me. I love to chat with you in the comments. Uh, if you have questions, please leave them down below. I, I usually try to answer as best as I can. I currently have the capacity again to reply to comments. I still have a ton of unanswered comments from months ago, but I think I'm just gonna try and keep up with the ones that are current. Alrighty, should I rank these? I think this is very easy, so I'm going to do this. Um, I think I will... <sighs> this is hard. Basically, all of these pens are my number one pens. But if I should needed to um, rank them in and put them in a specific order, then I would probably do it this way. Mm. Yeah, I think this is my current ranking. This is my number one pen. I think if I'm inking this, this will always be on number one, unless the ink doesn't work with the pen. I just love the flow of this and the ink. This was just a great combination. Same with this one, same with this one, same with this one. I just needed to put them in some kind of order. And so I just went with, I really love this color. I would buy a, a bottle of this in a heartbeat. I love how these go together. I loved that I rediscovered my love for this pen. I enjoyed the shimmer in this a lot and I'm infatuated with this ink. I really love the Konpeki out of this deep blue. I love this ink. I am struggling with the grip section a little bit because of the ink that is always there. So it needs to investigate more. The Altgold Grün didn't work for me and then Lavender Frost, not my thing. But I get, this is basically top one, top one A, top one B, top one C, top one D, top two, top three, top four, top five, you know? So, okay. Alrighty. I've spread this video out as long as I could. Now I need to say goodbye. Bye and thank you so much for watching. I will see you soon. See you. See you soon. Soon, soon, soon. Bye-bye-bye.